So getting organized, finding your stuff. Now I'll take questions on this lesson tomorrow or next class as well because I have a feeling some of you are like, oh, Christmas! Well. Number 12? Sure. What was number 12? Oh, is it easier to hit a home run off of a fast pitch or off of a slow pitch? And then it says uh, using principles of physics. And apparently I chopped off the final few words and I was supposed to say using principles of physics right to explain your answer. Well, what do you think? Is it easier to hit a home run after a fast pitch or a slow pitch? Any baseball players know for a fact which one? Yeah. Why fast pitch? Sorry? Can't remember. Well, they, they probably don't go into the details in baseball. They Mm, you watch like a science thing. I, I guess I would answer first of all, um, in, with a fast pitch, the ball has more kinetic energy. And that kinetic energy has got to go somewhere. If the bat comes to a stop, or nearly to a stop, if the bat, where does its kinetic energy go? Into the ball. So it doesn't absorb much kinetic energy from the ball. And also, in terms of momentum, I think if you write out a nice momentum equation, you'll find that time is shorter when we write the uh, input. I would probably approach it something like this. The change in momentum is also equal to the force times the change in time. Okay? And I think the shorter the change in time, the bigger the force that would be applied to the ball if I divide by change in time over to this side, the smaller it is. And I think with a fast pitch, it's a shorter impact speed, impact time. That's one way to answer it. I don't know. I'll come up with a better one. You caught me off guard, actually. I can't come up with a great little formula right now. I, it is a fast pitch, though. It was a good thinking question. Any others? Jeanette or anybody? But believe it or not, today we're finishing off the unit. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Got number four? Sure. Okay. The two kilogram mass below starts at rest. I would probably, in my mind, or even physically, Nicole, underline at rest. That's always an important one to me. And slides down the frictionless ramp. Good, no friction. It then hits and sticks to a, oh, collision. And they fly off the table. Find the horizontal distance traveled before hitting the ground. Okay. Is there a change in height? So what I would, my first would be to use this. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. Because what I'd like to know is how fast is this traveling at the bottom of the hill? Oh, wonderfully, my initial kinetic is zero because it says at rest. And for the purposes of math, I'm going to let the ground be two meters high. I'm going to let this be the ground, not this. I'm going to let this be the ground, which means I could do that. Would you? Are you able to find how fast it's traveling at the bottom of the hill? You can handle that okay? Okay, that would be my first step. I'm going to run out of room, so I'm going to kind of just tell you the steps and let you try it. My second step... Once it's right there, there's going to be a collision. Oh, did I say collision? Momentum. Okay. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Mass 1. After the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Stuck together or separate? How do you know? Because the word together would... Okay. Uh, fancy word. What was the fancy word for a collision where they stuck together? Do you remember? Inelastic. There's elastic and inelastic. Inelastic means they stuck together. Could you use this then to find out how fast they're traveling when they get right to there? The final velocity after the collision. Yes? Okay. Then step three is going to be what you've really just found is Vx 
That's going to tell you the horizontal velocity. And what they want you to find is the range, which is dx. And we said from our projectiles unit, dx equals vxt uh, plus a half at. Oh, no, no, horizontally there was no acceleration. Is that okay so far? Do I know vx? Well, this, the, uh, to this would get me to there. Do I know t? Nope. Not yet. Ah, ah. What's the vertical height that it's dropping? Two meters. What's its initial vertical velocity? And I'll give you a hint. What's the vertical height that it's dropping? What's its initial vertical velocity? Zero. And you know distance is two. And you know a is negative 9.8. I think you can find t. You know how long it's going to take it to fall two meters. Uh, let's see. I would use v equals a half a t squared. V i t is going to cancel because v i is zero vertically. And this is vertical, vertical, vertical. And this is vertical, vertical, vertical. And you can solve for t. And then that t is going to go right there. That's a tough one. Question. I don't know if I'm going to give you one quite that multi-layered. I would feel comfortable with this as the nasty multiple choice two marker. I would not feel comfortable with this as here's a nasty seven mark written question. Although I like it. It's a nice combination of almost everything except friction. I think it's the only thing that doesn't show up in here. Is that all right? That's why I signed that one. I thought that was good putting everything together. Okay. As I was saying... Uh, we're actually going to finish off the unit today. I'll have a take-home quiz for you next class, I think. Uh, I'm thinking right now your test is... I can either do it a week from today, Tuesday, or th Thursday of next week. just means I'd start the next unit Tuesday of next week. Thursday of next week? Okay, so your test is going to be a week from Thursday. Does that work? Someone is actually looking at their agenda, which makes more sense to me because they're checking to see. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll do a tutorial. Huh, excuse me. I'll do a tutorial next week. Monday or Wednesday after school. I don't know which yet. I'll let you guys know Thursday. We'll take a vote and see who can make the most of them. So basketball players, that's your little warning as well. Okay. All we're going to be doing today is just fine-tuning and looking at tough, weird questions. Now, I'm mostly going to be looking at challenging, difficult questions today. You don't need to go, oh, is that the test? All No, some of the stuff will be in a nice straight line on the test. But physics 12 is the two-dimensional world, so we are going to look at collisions with angles. Example 1. A 10 kilogram curling stone is sliding across the ice when it hits a stationary 18 kilogram bucket of sand. After the collision, the curling stone's velocity is 3 meters per second due east. And the bucket has a velocity of 2.3 meters per second at 43 degrees south of east. What was the initial velocity, magnitude, and direction? of the curling stone before the collision. So I like this question, I like this question. You're going to have one like this. Can you first of all see that there is a collision? That means and root momentum. Is this in a nice straight line, or by reading the question, do you get the feeling this is going to be angles and stuff? I see 43 degrees and east. And in fact that I see east, I think over here I'm going to do my standard compass rows to make sure I don't do a dumb mistake along the way. Is there a collision, Emily? Say yes, because I already asked that question about 30 seconds ago. You back with me now? Okay. So I'm going to say this. If there's a collision, the sum of all the initial momentum has to equal the sum of all the final momentum. Now, on your test, I will probably give you a picture, but I'm deliberately not here to just ramp it up a level. We're going to see if we can puzzle out the dolp, the picture ourselves. Before the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Yeah, so I'm going to go momentum of object 1 initial, 
There's my collision. After the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Both stuck together or separate? Separate? So momentum of object 1 final plus momentum of object 2 final. Were these in a nice straight line? Can I go straight to doing cross multiplying in algebra and stuff like that? Or were these in angles? Angles, then I'm going to dope. Okay? Let's see what I do know here. Here's my picture. Do I know the initial direction of mass 1? No, that's what they're actually asking me to find. So I'm going to leave this side blank for a second. Do I know the final direction of mass 1? Uh, yeah, east. And I can even tell you how long this arrow is, because momentum is conserved. What was the final momentum of mass 1? If you go mass times velocity, how big is this arrow? Well, it's going to be 10 times, what's the final velocity? 3, okay. This arrow is going to be 30 kilogram meters per second. Do I know the direction of mass 2, the bucket? Yeah, let's be really, really careful. It says 43 degrees. Connor, what of what? Okay. Here's east. I'm going to go south of east. 43 degrees. How big is this arrow? Well, what's the momentum of bucket two of the yeah, bucket of mass two? If you go mass times velocity, it's going to be eighteen times two point three, and give it to me to the full a number of sig figs, not rounding off. Matt, forty-one point four. Caitlin, what's this right here underneath my little roving dot? What's that right there? It's meant to be really, really obvious. How do I add vectors? Draw them tip to tail. Even though I don't know what this looks like, I'm going to add these two together tip to tail. I'm going to do it up here because I have room and I'm trying hard to keep this all on one page, okay? So it's going to look like this. 30 plus a little longer. 41.4, where this angle here was 43. Oh, can you see what mass 1's initial velocity must, sorry, momentum must look like? It must be, there's my, from the tail of the first to the tip of the second vector. Here is momentum of object one initial. <sighs> Mitchell, is there a nice right angle in this triangle? Okay. Oh, and I got a real problem. I don't have any angle in this triangle. What did you just do on your calculator? Yeah, did you go 180 minus 43? What'd you get? How big is this angle right here? 137. Okay, now I can do this, and it's going to be cosine law. Right? So far, so good? What was the cosine law? It was going to be momentum of object 1 initial squared equals, it's these two squared minus 2 times these two cos. 30 squared plus 41.4 squared minus 2, 30, 41.4 cosine of 137. What's the magnitude of the initial momentum of object 1? Thirty squared 
plus 41.4 squared minus 2 times 30 times 41.4 cosine of 137 square root, don't forget the square root. I get the initial momentum 66.563 and I'll again carry some extra sig figs because this is nowhere near my final answer. But my question wasn't asking me for the final momentum. Brianna, what was the question asking me to find? Velocity. If I know momentum, how can I always find velocity if I know momentum? Nice and loud. You're right. So I buy mass, right? Momentum is mass times velocity. And since mass is a scalar, I don't need to do any fancy schmancy triggering. I can go now. Uh, velocity of one initial is going to be 66.563 divided by m1, which I think was 10. Yes, I scrolled down. It was 10, wasn't it? Yep. I can do that in my head. 6.66 6 meters per second. And I'm done. Or am I? Have I found the velocity? Nope. I found the speed. I found the magnitude. But what does it say next to the words velocity in brackets? What does it say in the original question, Jacob? Oh, direction. More trig. All right, let's go back to my diagram. Oh, I'll put a little at. Oh, it's going to be that angle right there. Because that's where my initial vector is starting from. Oh, by the way, that's going to be what of what? That's south of east. I'll leave a little space and put that. Now I need the angle. Can I use Sokotoa here, Andrew? No right angle. It's going to be a sine law. It's going to be the sine of this guy over what's across. It's going to be the sine of the mystery angle over 41.4 equals the sine of the angle that we do know, 137 over... Don't, I don't, oh, yeah, I do know momentum, one initial, 66.5, uh, 66.563. How will I solve this, Brett? Cross multiply, that's going to get sine theta by itself. I'll get a decimal. Once I finish cross multiplying, I'll go second function sine to find the angle. In fact, I'm going to get this. Sine theta equals 41.4 sine of 137 all over 66.563. 41.4 times the sine of 137 all over, hey, I have this answer still on my calculator. That's convenient. And then I'm going to go second function sine of that. And I get almost exactly 25 degrees. Okay. To me, that's fair game on a test. Eh, probably with a picture. Although we handled it okay. Example two. Example two. Try example two on your own. Both masses are identical. That's kind of nice. Remember we said the word obliquely. That's a fancy word for at an angle. So I'm going to press pause on the video here.
skip the key spot. I could be wrong. Add a little part B. I'm going to add a little part B right here. B. What was the change in kinetic energy? Or if I wanted to phrase this differently, I could say, Emily, how much energy was lost to heat? Because whatever kinetic energy has vanished had to go somewhere. Remember I collided those those two chrome spheres together. We actually had enough heat to burn paper. The energy's got to go somewhere. Kinetic energy is not conserved. Total energy is conserved, which is why I put that note there, and I should have put it at the very bottom of the page. So, But anyways, kinetic energy is only conserved in the fancy collision that we call perfectly elastic. So what was the change in kinetic energy? Well, what's change in anything? Let's find kinetic energy initial. Kinetic energy initial. Before the collision, what was moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Because kinetic energy is the energy of motion. Jacob, before the collision, what was moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Okay, it's going to be a half m1 v1 squared. That's how much energy there was before this collision. Uh, 0 0.5 times 5 times 0.8 squared. How much energy was there before this collision? How much energy was there before this collision, Emily? Half mv squared? Yes? Did you type it in? That's what I'm kind of working. You got the calculator right there. Yeah. 1.6 joules of energy. After the collision, what was moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Well, okay. So they each have kinetic energy. So kinetic energy final is going to be a half m1 v final squared plus a half m2 v final 2 squared because they each have different velocities. But you'll notice... Energy is a scalar. I'm not pulling out the heavy-duty trig here. This is why we like energy so much more than momentum, is it's easier on the math. The final amount of kinetic energy is going to be 0.5 times mass 1, which was 5 times... What was the final velocity of mass 1? Mass A. Uh, 0.4 squared plus... 0.5, mass 2 was also 5, and its final velocity was th uh, 0 0.6 squared. How much kinetic energy was there after the collision? You get 1.3? Yep. 1.3 joules. So the change in change in anything is final minus initial. 1.3 minus 1.6. We lost three joules of a point three joules of kinetic energy. Where'd that energy go? Heat. Some heat was generated by this collision. If you ever find that your initial and your final match, then you know it was that magical, perfectly elastic that only happens theoretically. Turn the page.
So example three is very similar to example two. I'm going to I'm going to skip example 3 but that if you want extra practice there's one for you to try and compare with what what your friends got. We're going to go to example 4. Example 4. A metal disc explodes. Boom into three pieces which fly off on the same geometric plane. Got you, Brett? You awake now? The first piece has a mass of 2.4 and it flies off north at 10. The second piece has a mass of 2, point, uh, sorry, 2 and it flies east at 12.5. What is the speed and direction of the third piece which has a mass of 1.4 kilograms? Well, I'm seeing compasses and directions so the first thing I'm going to do, Jacob, is this. Joel, was there a collision? No. Was there an explosion? So there was a jeune. I'm going to use momentum. I'm going to start out by saying the sum of all the initial equals the sum of all the final. Before the explosion, what was my momentum? a trick question. Before the explosion, what was the momentum? Brett, zero. So after the explosion, what does my momentum have to be? Except, did my masses stick together or stay apart? What's moving? Mass one, mass two, mass three, or all of them? So it's going to be zero equals mass one, uh, momentum one, momentum two, and momentum three. Are they in a nice straight line or are they at angles? Dalt. Draw our little picture. So momentum of the first guy says flies off north. So it's going to look like this. And if I go mass times velocity, I can do that in my head. 24 plus. Momentum of the second guy, it says it flies off east. And if I go mass times velocity, I'm going to get... 25 plus oh I don't know what that guy looks like that's okay Trevor I got two momentum momenta is actually the plural of momentum so I have two of them how do I add them together oh let's draw that so it's gonna look like this 24 mm. 25. Now, careful now. Kayla, I am not going to draw it this way. That's incorrect. Because the key thing that I know here, Nicole, is I know my final momentum. My final momentum is actually going to be zero. What would zero look like? Zero would be coming back to where I started from. Here is the momentum of the third guy. Oh, and Joel, what's right here? Ah, nice. Which means I can use Pythagoras and Sokotoa. Not only that, if this was multiple choice, Brett, how big is this? Read it to me. How big is this? Are those almost the same size? I'd be looking for an angle close to 45. I might even cheat, and if there's only one angle in the 40s, I'd just circle that answer and move on. If I was pressed for time, if this was multiple choice. It's going to be like 44 degrees, I'm betting. Or 46 degrees, I don't know. Right? So it's almost an isosceles triangle. Anyways, let's find momentum of object 3. Momentum of object 3 squared is going to be 24 squared plus 25 squared. Not cosine law, I'm using Pythagoras. Brie, what'd you get for the th momentum of the third object? Thirty-four? Okay, so thirty-four point what 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 what? 
than that. Anybody else? Is that right? Seems right. That's the momentum. How do I find the velocity? Okay. So, velocity of the third guy is going to be 34.6554 divided by 1.4. What'd you get? And now give this one to me to 368. Sorry? 24.8? meters per second at and I think the angle that we're going to be finding here is always the tail of where we're starting from right there which Sean is going to be what of what what's this one going to be looking at our compass rows yep South of, uh, it's going this way, isn't it? I think it isn't it south of west. I think it's south of west. Don't you're not looking at the black arrow. You're looking at where the red arrow. I know the black arrow is going east. I don't care. It's it's. I'm going south of west to head in that direction. Yes, yes, yes. Let's add that over here. Uh, S of W. Oh, and this is Sokotoa. I can actually find the angle using uh, opposite adjacent. Hey, I can find the angle using tangent. Oh, tangent of the angle equals 24 over 25. So there's going to be an explosion on your test. I like explosions. By the way, any of you have your inner nerd, and I'm actually going to try and buy tickets. Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman are coming to the Queen Elizabeth Theater at the end of this month uh, for two shows talking about Mythbusters and answering questions from the audience. So I'm going to see if I can get tickets for me. Uh, 43.8, yes? 43.8 degrees. How much kinetic energy was there before this explosion? Zero. How much after the explosion? Lots. Where did it come from? This would have, this would be an energy coming from either chemical energy or some type of stored potential energy. That's how explosions work. Sample five. We'll finish this one, then we'll call that a unit. I won't do the nasty scholarship one today. I'd like to. <sighs> Kayla, can you read to me the first three words of example five? No, example five. The first three words of example five. We've all turned the page now, dear. Sorry, what? Does Mr. Duick like roller coasters? I like this question. I like this question. I like this question. I also like this because it's again, it's going to combine energy and momentum. There's going to be a change in height somewhere in here, and there's going to be a collision somewhere in here. And it's also not too nasty because I think everything's going to be in a nice straight line. So no heavy trig here. It says a roller coaster with an initial velocity VI of 8.6 rolls down a track with a height of 18 meters. It strikes a second identical roller coaster. Mass 1 equals mass 2 equals 250 kilograms. And that second roller coaster has an initial velocity of 2.4. It's already moving. The coasters stick together and continue up the next hill. How high can the roller coasters reach? If I were to dolp, it would look something like this. Here is mass 1. What's its velocity right now at the top of the hill? Joel, I think you said it. Oh, Trevor? 8.6? Yeah. I thought I heard it come from over there. 
Trevor, how fast will it be going at the bottom of the hill? Still 8.6? Really? It's going to go down the hill and not gain any speed whatsoever? Let me ask that question again, Trevor, thinking carefully like a physics nerd. How fast will it be going at the bottom of the hill? Still 8.6? Can't possibly. So we're going to have to do some... Uh, oh, and it's a change in height energy calculation. Now, we also have mass 2. Mass 2 is sitting right here. Trevor, how fast is mass 2 going right now? 2.4. And I think what's going to happen is mass 1 is going to come along... Wham! They're going to collide, which is going to change their speed, and they're going to move off up the hill and we want to know how high up the hill can they reach together. And based on this diagram, now you see why I traditionally try and type or use diagrams that I do on a computer. I think, Jacob, this is a three-part question. I think we have change in height, Collision. What do I use for collision? Look up. Momentum. And then change in height. Energy. There's going to be our three-pronged approach. So I'm going to call this situation A, situation B, situation C, just so we can be organized in our notes. You don't have to do it this way on your test. You can just start. But this way we know what the heck we did. And in situation A, we said it's going to be energy. Kinetic energy initial plus potential energy initial equals kinetic energy final plus potential energy final. A is from here to here. Kayla, are any of these zero? Kayla? Kayla, looked in the wrong place. Sorry. Kayla, are any of these zero? Kara is what I, yeah. Let's see. Is our initial velocity zero? Okay. Is our initial height zero? So both of those are not zero. Is our final speed at the bottom of the hill zero? Is our final height at the bottom of the hill zero? Ah. You know, yay. A half mv initial squared plus mgh initial equals a half mv final squared. Oh, yay, my mass is canceled too. I'm trying to find v final. Emily, how would I get v final by itself? times by 2 and then square roots. I'm going to go like this, times by 2 right now. Yay, those cancel, but there's going to be a 2 right there. I think I'm going to get this. V final equals big square root of V initial squared plus 2 G H initial. I don't think I need quite that big a square root. Uh, 8.6 squared plus 2 times 9.8 times, I think the initial height was 18. What's my final speed, Trevor, at the bottom of the hill? It's definitely going to be bigger, yes? Plus 2 times 9.8 times 18 square root. Y'all get 20.658173? Blah, 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 blah. I'll go 20.658. That brings us to situation B, Matt. Bam! 
the collision. Did I say collision? Right? Before the collision, what was moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? I think both this time. Okay, so I'm going to write momentum of object 1 initial plus momentum of object 2 initial. And they're not stuck together, so I have to list them separately. After the collision, what's moving? Mass 1, mass 2, or both? Both stuck together or separate? Inelastic? Caitlin, is this collision in a nice straight line, or are there yucky angles and junk in here? Ah, so you know what? I'm going to go not dull. I can go straight to MV, 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 and, and solve. It's going to be mass 1, V1 initial plus mass 2, V2 initial equals mass 1 plus mass 2, V final. And what I'm interested in is asking how fast they move off together after the collision. I want V final. Zay, how would I get V final by itself? Divide by what? Mass 1, mass 2. Yep. By the way, since mass 1 and mass 2 are the same, you could just write M, M, and probably some stuff cancels along the way. Whatever. You're going to get this. Mass 1, V1 initial, plus mass 2, V2 initial, all over mass 1 plus mass 2. Mass 1, 250. V1, not 8.6, 20.658. Mass 2, 250. V2 initial was 2.4. All over. Mass 1 plus mass 2, which is 500. Good yawn, Mr. Redman. Good. You back now, though? Because I don't want to blow something up again to get your attention. I can. What'd you get, Brett? 11.5291. Does anybody else agree with that? Yeah? No? Yeah? 11.5291. Which makes sense. The faster one's going to slow down. The slower one's going to speed up. That's in the ballpark I was hoping for an answer between 2.4 and uh, 20.658. That brings us to part C. Change in height energies. Are any of these zero? Kara, any of these? Uh, is my initial speed at the bottom of the hill zero? No. How high am I at the bottom of the hill? Oh, that's nice. Is my final speed at the top of the hill zero? I think if we're asking how high can we go, I think at the top for a split second, how fast will we be going? I agree. But my final height won't be zero. This one actually simplifies quite nicely. I like this. I'm going to get this. A half mv initial squared equals mgh final. Now this mass is the mass of both of... Oh, wait a minute. Doesn't matter. Because these two masses cancel as well. Mitchell, I'm trying to find the final height. How would I get the final height by itself? Yep. Final height is going to be V initial squared divided by 2G. The 2 comes from the 1 half on the front. I'll put it to the bottom because that looks tidier, Joe. 
So if you still have the 11.291, so 0.5291, square it and divide by, in brackets, 2 times 9.8, or maybe by this time you know that 9.8 times 2 is 19.6 because we've been doing it fairly often. What'd you get? 6.78? Anybody else? 6.78? Yeah? Now the only risk here is don't round off along the way. Carry extra sig figs along the way because you're doing so many, so much squaring. If you rounded this answer to 20.7, I'm willing to bet you'd be way off by the time you got here. So 7.8, is that what you said? Direction. Did they ask for velocity or did they ask for speed in the question? I oh, know height, scalar. Okay. So I like that question. I don't know because I somehow, for some reason, thought it was a speed. There's my first mistake of the year. Plenty more where that comes from. Neat scholarship question, but I'm going to pass. What's your homework? The entire unit review. 